Thanks for coming tonight. Uh, first thing, I'll obviously, full disclosure, you know, here I'm, I'm here to tell you now is the time to start a green venture, and, and yet I'm keeping my day job. So, <laughs> so take, take this with a grain of salt here. Um, you know, I, I, I do want to say that it is a wonderful time to be thinking about, about green technology and entrepreneurship. And I'm going to talk uh, a little bit about that, and then, um, and then I'm going to talk about what I think is as important, which is understanding how, how in fact, you would want to go about starting one of these ventures. Uh, so let me start with a, a quote from Thomas Friedman in his new book, Hot, Flat, and Crowded, which generally captures a lot of the, the sentiment right now, both uh, in, in public and private institutions around, around uh, uh, how we're going to solve the problems of green technology. It says, we're not going to regulate our way out of the problems. We can only innovate our way out. That's putting a lot of pressure on entrepreneurs and, and, uh, and others, scientists and inventors, to come up with better technologies that will change the way we live. Uh, I think I, I mentioned this for several reasons, one of which is it's behind a lot of the funding that's happening now in green technology. This is just VC investments. It's actually VC investments are, are a fraction of, of the total public and private investments in green technology. But in clean energy, just if you track the last few years, 2008 topped 2007. It was on its way to doubling it, but in fact, got it hit the skids um, towards the end of, uh, of summer. But in essence, what we see is an enormous influx of private capital going into green technology ventures. So purely from a perspective of can you get funding, there has been no better time to find funding in green technology and, and um, um, entrepreneurship. Now, that said, what we're seeing now is a precipitous drop off in funding from the venture capital community. But we're also seeing a precipitous rise. Uh, you know, if the, if the stimulus package goes through, we are looking potentially at a 10x uh, growth in the investments in R&D and in um, clean energy spending that's going to come out of the government. And a lot of that's being focused towards early stage uh, technology development. So what, you know, what we're going to lose in venture capital uh, investment, we're going to gain multiple times over in, in government spending. Now, all of that said, well, 2007, about 9% of all venture capital um, money was going into that. It looks like it was about 10% in 2008. Um, it's going into things like alternative energy sources, energy intelligence, power reliability, advanced materials, services. But all of that still represents a very small section of the market. Now, we can look at this slide as 1.4% as full or 98.6% or empty. Um, still, clean energy represents such a small fraction of the total energy consumed in the country that you know, we can look at that and say, boy, we have a long way to go. Or we can look at it and say, you know, growth in this sector is simply going to increase because any, you, you've got an enormous market waiting and it's really relatively untapped. It's going to, if you can get, you know, parity level energy, you know, the same cost as coal, same cost as, as subsidized um, uh, um, petroleum, natural gas, coal, you can, you know, you've got an opportunity, a huge opportunity ahead of you. So that said, I think that one of the other challenges we'll, we'll, we'll face is, what does all of this mean for green technology entrepreneurship? And what I want to say is actually, this is a red herring by the way. What I want to say is a lot of what we've been doing and, and talking about in terms of green technology and entrepreneurship has been in many ways a red herring. Now the, the general definition, the, actually the origins of a red herring, is a red herring is a fish that you would drag across the path of you know, dogs hunting a fox or something else to throw them off the scent. And it's been used ever since to sort of represent something that really is just a distraction. Now, what I want to suggest then is, in fact, a lot of what we're thinking about in terms of green technology and innovation entrepreneurship is, is really a major distraction and could, in fact, set us back worse than, than, than bring us anything of, of benefit. If we increase our, our uh, Department of Energy spending ten, tenfold, which is looking like that's going to happen in the stimulus package, where is that going to go? What's that going to do? And then I simply take that, but you can look at the EPA, you can look at the NSF or any of these others, 
And, and if we look at this kind of, of early stage investments in, in green technology innovation, what are we going to get from that money? Because what I really want to talk about tonight is, while this is a perfect time to be starting a green technology company, it's also just as good a time as it has as always been to start it badly, to do it wrong. So what I want to set now is, is sort of the frame for what we should be thinking about in terms of that. How should I put it? A lot of people have called for an energy moonshot, right? We need to do for energy, energy efficiency, solar, you name it, what we did for the Apollo mission and getting a man on the moon. We need to have a Manhattan project for, uh, for energy, right? Somehow that doesn't look as good in, in image as it does on text, right? It's like when Tom Friedman calls for a Manhattan project in energy, everybody thinks, oh, that's good. You know, we brought a bunch of scientists together and we created something. But then when you put Fat Boy up there, it looks like, gee, geez. <laughs> all right. Now, the other thing I'm going to say, though, so I'm going to say, first of all, here are our red herrings. We've got the Apollo mission. We've got the Manhattan Project. I'm going to even argue the light bulb. We've got the light bulb as a red herring. There we go. And then we've got mouse traps. This is my, this is my wonderful fallback, a wonderful uh, research project that I've, I've tapped into. All of these are red herrings for what we need to do if we want to start a new green tech venture. So let me um, begin with this. If you build a better mousetrap, the world will be the path to your door, right? Ralph Waldo Emerson said this. I'm developing a business to address food shortages in rural Mexico. I'm bringing eight years of international experience to GSSC. I am building the supply chain for tea from coffee leaves in Ethiopia. I teach supply chain management, enabling GSSE students to leverage operations, logistics, and sourcing strategies in developing nations. I use my experience in the GSSE program to start a business designing engines for small-scale agriculture. I'm a GSSE graduate, and I am making a difference. I believe we can make a difference. I believe we can make a difference. I believe we can change the world.